I'm Marcos de la Rocha. I'm a research engineer at Protocol Labs. And at Consensus Lab, and what we're working on mainly and what we're focusing on is on IPC. And the idea behind IPC, many of you may, may be aware already, is to uh, scale horizontally the Filecoin blockchain. So try to run subnets that are able to interoperate with, uh, with the Filecoin mainnet and uh, interact and anchor their security to them as a way of deploying new, new applications that can have uh, more scalability and, and new features. Last year, we were focused on, on like um, figuring out how we could do this, uh, have an MVP, and this is how it looked like, right? So we had Lotus, everything was a monolith, and running a subnet, it was as, nice, as easy as calling um, a command in Lotus, and it would run the subnet for you, and, and you could start interacting with, with it. It was great, because the user experience was great, but it had a lot of problems in terms of uh, once you want to move into production, because if a subnet failed, it was really hard to, like everything was handled with routines, in the end, it was a nightmare. So as we're moving into production, this is what, um, what the architecture looks like. And what I'm going to show today, actually, I think I demoed it six months ago or eight months ago, but it was with this architecture. Now we're moving into the production architecture. I'm going to show how it will look like as we move into mainnet. And the idea is that we have a new piece of so instead of having everything in the same Lotus and like handling everything in the same Lotus, what we have now is that we have the different independent networks and subnets. So this root net could be uh, the Falcon mainnet, and we could have running or, or like the, the community could uh, run different subnets, and we have this piece of software that is called the is called the IPC agent, which is the one that is going to orchestrate all of the communication with the different blockchains. So instead of having to run a single Lotus that has to know how to interact with every blockchain, which has a limitation because once we start having like other technologies in these subnets, it's really hard to embed every consensus algorithm and every uh, single feature into Lotus. So we, in this way, we're decoupling the what we call replica. So the um, the um, running of the blockchains and the subnets from the IPC agents, which is our IPC client and the one that we use to um, use IPC over all of these networks. And um, so if someone wants to run a subnet in IPC uh, that is communicating with, with Falcon Manet, it wants to communicate with some L2 and it wants to run another, another L3, this is the architecture or the different processes that it would have to to run. So the IPC agent communicating to different nodes or peer implementations in, a, in each of these networks. So you see that this allows to, to more like uh, more decoupled architecture, but before we were all happy and young and it was just interacting with a single process. Now we have a lot of processes. We, there's a lot of overhead that we need to handle. Um, if you want to look at the code before, uh, uh, it was all Lotus. Everything was in, in our fork of Lotus that we call Eudico. Now there are a bunch of, of other repos because we have the APC agent, that is this client that I'm going to show, that it's used to orchestrate the different uh, instances of subnets with which our applications wants to interact. Then we have the IPC actors because uh, with FVM before, everything was in the legacy VM of, of Lotus. Now we, have, uh, we target the FVM. Actually, we are not targeting the FEVM. Everything is in Rust, but we're moving into Solidity, this contract, so that we can also be in user land with FEVM. But right now, what we're doing is we have a, a custom bundle in our subnets that include our uh, FVM actors compiled to Wasm. So if you want to have a look at the actors that run all of the on-chain logic for IPC, you can go to this repo. And finally, we have, of course, Eudico, which is our fork of Lotus that includes like a new consensus algorithm and does all of the heavy lifting of the blockchain side of things to run each of these different subnets. So it's the peer implementation for each of these subnets. And as I was saying, there's a lot more now than before. Before using IPC was easy. Now we're trying to improve the UX, but we are we are working on a lot of documentation, and it would be great if and like all of you can start testing this and give feedback. Uh, like DVD is perfect that you did that demo because we really need to do dog food this and figure out like the right UX for for this tech. And with that, I will jump into my. So yeah, as I was saying, like the main our main process for to interact with IPC is the IPC agent. So what I'm gonna do first is like run this um, my IPC agent. So now we're running the IPC agent. Again, it's a really uh, slim process that will do all of the the interaction with the different blockchains. What we need to do now is like we have nothing right now. IPC is not there, so we need to run some 
some root net and from there deploy a, a subnet. So the first thing that we're going to do is like we have this convenient um, script to run um, a root net. So this is a really uh, a script that runs a, a single validator root net is for testing. Um, and it simulates what would be our interaction with the Falcon mainnet if we wanted to deploy a subnet um, over Falcon. This may take a while because under the hood, what, it, what this is doing is uh, deploying a, a Docker container, um, creating a, a Lotus daemon, and then running a mere validator because in, in our, so we're simulating here actually not the Falcon mainnet, but our SpaceNet testnet that runs the mere consensus. And the mere consensus in the end is a BFT uh, consensus that goes a bit faster, so it's so our subnets ship with this consensus that is faster and has like uh, you can go at any block time that you want, but we have it configured to go a one second block time. So uh, deploying an actor, deploying a smart contract should feel faster than how it feels now in in Falcon Magnet. Yeah, I should have prepared some joke or something for the wait. In the meantime, let me share the other piece. That, oh, okay, cool. So it was what's unexpected. Uh, so here you see that we deployed the, the root net and it gives us this script, a bunch of information that we need for our IPC agent to be able to interact with, with our, in this case, we only have a node in the root net, but we could have like more, a single node running, like interacting with the Falcon mainnet or whatever other um, architecture we want. So here it says that uh, we're running in this uh, container. That's not important, but what it will be really important is what is our default wallet and what is the token to interact with our peer implementation in the root. And the reason for this is because we have to go to our IPC agent and tell them to, what are the credentials to interact with the rootnet? In this case, I'm just going to interact with the rootnet. It's listening in this port, and I'm going to give. I'm going to give him the. So with this, our IPC agent now knows how to interact with the rootnet, and we can uh, create a new subnet. Uh, when we say this IPC agent creates subnet, actually, what we're doing is deploying what we call this subnet actor, which is the smart contract in the rootnet that will govern the operation of the subnet. So, hey, hello, something failed. Uh, okay, this is probably because I didn't copy paste this correctly. Okay, so I forgot to reload the config to notify with my next, what was my latest config, so sorry. Um, yeah, so now I, I, I'm going to be able to create the. Should have done a, a cheat sheet for this. So yeah, I once I get the token, I have to put it in my in my in my config and reload the config. So now you see that we created this subnet actor that is going to govern the new subnet, and it says that we have a subnet run like a new subnet actor where we can run a subnet um, with ID root. T0102. So now what we're going to do is actually run a node for that subnet. So join the subnet and, and run in that subnet. And I mean, we have also uh, this, uh, a convenient script to show how this works. But in order for you to see the logs and see what is happening under the hood, I'm going to run the node manually to show you how it works. So here I'm just running a Lotus daemon with, um, with the genesis of this new subnet. And what we're going to do now is initialize um, initialize the validator for the subnet. So we initialize the validator for the subnet. We import our wallet. And uh, you'll see that right now, if I try to run the validator, so actually, yeah, I try to run the validator, it's going to fail. And the reason for this is that because I haven't joined the subnet. So um, my uh, node will interact with the parent, and we'll have to ask permission to this subnet actor that we um, that we just deployed to ask for permission to, because like the parent is the one that runs the subnet. So what we need to do is to join the subnet in the parent. To do that, like we have to check, I mean, we have to announce what is our validator address. We take like any of these. Um, multi addresses for my validator. And now we're going to join the subnet. So from the APC agent, we say that we want to join this new subnet, that we want to put this amount of file as collateral, and that we want to be 
we want other validators to find out in this. So we copy it there. And once we've joined the subnet, what we're going to be able is that now the parent will have us registered as a valid validator of the subnet. And you see that when we try to uh, start running in this case, now we're part of the subnet and we, we have the root net where we're mining. And also we have a new network here, uh, subnet, where we could be running any kind of application. What happens if, like, again, the, with the APC agent, we can handle all the lifecycle of our subnet. We could deploy another subnet. Like, for instance, we could create here a new, another subnet with a parent in the root. And we'll have some other, um, so the ID was, in this case, C01002, and I could run my own application and my own nodes for this, for this subnet. And I can also leave the subnet. And if I leave the subnet, what happens is that I take out my stake in the subnet. So um, my so in here in the right, in the bottom right, where I'm mining, once I leave the subnet, this validator should crash because like I no longer have rights to to mine in that subnet. So I leave the subnet, and once these transactions go through and the stake goes down, this validator should crash. And you see, like it crashes because I no longer have. Uh, access rights to mine. So this is just the life cycle of a subnet. Sorry for the delay. I forget completely about reloading the, the config. Uh, we also have convenient. So I showed you how to run a, a node for the subnet manually, but we are also working on scripts to run. But that's going to take a long time, so probably won't do that. But like we can run um, this subnet in a Docker, and you specify like the subnet that you want to you want to, um, uh, the node for the subnet that you want to deploy and so on, and you're able to uh, have containerized all of these processes that have been running locally. And the, the idea is that we're trying to figure out like the right UX. So, um, as, I mean, once it's ready, it, we will really appreciate all the feedback that you can give us to make this as, like deploying subnets as seamless as possible. Thank you.